Cool. Um, hi, everyone. Yep. So um, my name's Matt. I'm a web operations engineer. I work for GDS. Um, today, I want to talk to you about using Docker for CI builds. Um, it's not all about Docker, though. I'll go into that in a bit more detail. Um, so a little bit about me. I work on the infrastructure team for gov.uk. Um, so we work on tooling, um, uh, the, deploy the deployment pl platform, and in general, infrastructure, so CDN, failover, that kind of thing, um, for gov.uk, which is the single domain for all government agencies. Um, so to give you a little bit of context, um, the, um, this talk is about um, a project that I've been working on um, during a fire break that we've had at GovUK. Um, so the idea is that we've um, taken a little bit of time out of our normal um, schedule to work on projects that we wouldn't normally get time um, to work on. So um, basically fixing, fixing some tech debt and also um, playing with some new technologies um, uh, with a view to using those um, in, a, in a useful way on GovUK. Um, so um, our CI build pipeline. Um, so we've been using Jenkins. Um, been using it for quite a while now, a couple of years. Um, it's pretty good. Um, it's very configurable, and it's got lots of plugins, um, large ecosystem. But yeah, it's also quite hard to configure. Um, you configure it using XML. Um, we use uh, Puppet and configuration management. Um, we've looked at things like Jenkins Job Builder. Um, so in general. Um, we, we've we've tried to um, make Jen Jenkins easier to provision, um, but yeah, we've we've seen some issues where sometimes it just forgets its configuration, and then anyone can log in. Um, we're not sure if that's a plugin or whether that's Jenkins itself, um, but yeah, um, in general, it's not been easy to maintain. Um, setting up new jobs was also quite slow, um, so. Um, we had to configure a webhook with GitHub. We use <coughs> GitHub Enterprise internally, and we also use GitHub.com. Um, so yeah, trying to set up a new a new job so that you could just uh, run a build for your new application was quite tricky. New webhook, and we also uh, we created a Python tool called uh, um, there's a suite of tools actually um, GH tools. It's available on pip um, to do things like uh, release tagging um, and also update the build status. And we had to include that in our build scripts. We had to include the code to well, a call to update the build sta uh, status. So during the fire break, we said to ourselves, like, surely a CI server shouldn't be this complicated. It's just running a script and telling you, did it fail? Did it not? Um, so we started to look at um, alternatives. Um, so we thought, well, really, what, are our, what, what does a CI server need to do? And what are our requirements? So we, um, one of them, one of those is um, build tagging. Um, so once we've um, deployed a release, we want to know, um, we want to tag that, tag that release, so we can go back to it um, and go back in time. Um, we also wanted um, hosting or publishing of artifacts. Um, so uh, we have a couple of uh, Go applications, um, at least a couple now. Um, and uh, if we need binaries and we need to be able to deploy those to the servers, um, we need to be able to host artifacts. Um, and also uh, basic things like updating uh, GitHub build status. Um, other requirements, um, so I mentioned GitHub Enterprise. Um, we run GitHub Enterprise in-house. Um, and the reason for that is um, partly due to accreditation. Um, but yeah, we need to be able to integrate with that and uh, use a VPN to connect to it. Um, we also wanted, we currently uh, manage our users using GitHub OAuth, OAuth, and we wanted to continue doing that because it's really convenient. Um, Starters and leavers is quite are quite difficult to manage. Um, we've got quite a lot of developers, so that definitely helps. And also, the, any CI server that we would use uh, would need to support about 80 developers and engineers, um, and that kind of varies as, as well um, according to our current needs. So, um, what else would we ideally like um, that we don't have currently? Um, matrix builds. Well, I say we don't have currently. We do have modularity with Jenkins because of the plugin architecture. Um, but one thing we don't have are matrix builds. Um, so if you've used uh, TravisCI.org, for example, a uh, really nice feature is um, are, are those matrix builds. So build permutations, if you like. So uh, the um, title mentioned Docker, um, the title of the slide, uh, the presentation. Why Docker? Um, well, Docker is convenient. Uh, it's got wide adoption. Um, it also runs on Linux. Uh, most of our stack runs Ubuntu, so um, it's kind of convenient for us. But really, it's not about Docker. It's more about uh, why containers. Why, why did we come up with this idea of using um, containers for, um, for our CI server? So probably the most uh, significant benefit for us um, was um, better isolation of our test dependencies. 
So um, with our Jenkins uh, machines, we had a master and some slaves. Um, and we had specific versions of different databases um, to be used with different projects. And um, we generally comment in the puppet code, or um, we, we used uh, tagging as well. So we had the, the slaves tagged. Um, but it was really difficult um, to figure out which uh, projects um, and repositories were using specific versions of different databases. So it was really hard to know what you could remove safely um, without de developers complaining at you. Um, so um, that, that's, I think, the, most, um, the biggest benefit for us. And also preventing bleed um, between dependencies was really important. Um, another um, thing that containers um, would help us with um, was having readily available images. Um, so recently, uh, we wanted to a new version of Postgres. Um, and the easiest way was probably to upgrade to Ubuntu Trusty um, because it had the new version available. Um, and um, yeah, so it, it took a while to get a, 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 new, a new server running with our current CI infrastructure running Ubuntu Trusty, running that new version of Postgres. And it was quite a big jump just to get um, a build running um, with a specific version of Postgres. Um, so one of the things that containers provide, uh, specific Docker as well, um, are, for example, a Ruby image, a Golang image, Postgres, RabbitMQ. And you can just look for them in a registry and use them, right? Um, I'll come back to that later. Um, <coughs> notably, Docker now has official language stacks. Um, so they have like, an official Python, official Ruby um, image. Um, and those are really useful for testing. Um, I'll explain a bit more about why those have been so useful. Um, yeah, also less, less futz around with Puppet. Like Puppet is great, but if you just want something to run, to run a build, you don't want to be um, you know, configuring everything all the time. Um, another um, thing that um, containers would give us would be the ability to run um, integration tests on a full operating system. Um, so if you want, want to run a particular build in, say, a bunch of trusty, um, then great, we can, we can do that without having to set up a whole server. Um, finally, uh, the fact that you can set up um, a container and tear it down after the test um, means we'd have um, greater separation or isolation um, of individual builds. So we thought, okay, this is probably quite a, quite a good idea. Let's let's see what's available that would fill this need. Um, so we evaluated three solutions, um, remembering this is kind of like a time box project. Um, so we wanted to find out very quickly what what would meet our needs and our requirements. Um, so we looked at uh, Jenkins. Uh, so keep Jenkins. It is pretty good. Um, and use um, a, the .ci plugin, um, which is a plugin on top, top of Jenkins. We looked at Drone. Um, and we looked at uh, Travis Enterprise as well. Um, so um, all of those three solutions um, run builds using Docker. Um, .ci is a, um, a plugin, as I mentioned, developed by Groupon. Um, it's open source, um, codes on GitHub. Um, it's kind of like Jenkins, um, but not as you know it. Um, it provides a lot of nice features on top of Jenkins that allow you to uh, get started more quickly. So automatically sets up the webhooks, um, also updates your commit status. Um, the only thing was it felt kind of tacked on to Jenkins. Um, the user experience um, wasn't great. Um, you had. Um, .ci build separate to your main Jenkins builds, which for some people might be great, but for us wasn't the kind of consistent feel that we, we wanted. Um, in the time that we had, um, we didn't get it working. Um, not, for, not for lack of uh, skill, hopefully, um, but rather just the fact that um, the user experience wasn't great, as I mentioned. Um, and yeah, it just didn't, didn't work out of the box. Um, yeah. Your mileage may vary. Um, so we also looked at Travis Enterprise. Um, it, that's a, a screenshot from um, Travis or, uh, TravisCI.org, which is um, free for open source projects. But the UI is almost identical, so it's very familiar. Um, Travis uh, Enterprise is a paid product, um, and it's supported by Travis CI. So there's a, obviously an obvious benefit there. Um, and we already used, as I mentioned, Travis CI. Um, we use it for our open source projects, um, which of which we have a large number. Um, at GDS, we tend to prefer uh, open source where possible, where it makes sense to do so. Um, so we're already using TravisCI.org for those projects. Um, 
but that wasn't going to work all the, all the time. We have some projects hosted on GitHub Enterprise. Um, and also, the build times can be a little bit slow, sometimes on tra uh, Travis CI.org, or slower than we'd like, um, because you're competing for build time with all the other projects on there. Um, so as I mentioned, yeah, uh, Travis Enterprise is familiar. Um, a lot of the developers have used Travis before, so there's not a big uh, context switch for them. And, not, um, and um, it was also pretty, pretty quick to get running, to get installed. Um, so as, as part of um, our evaluation, um, the first thing we did was uh, get each of these servers running in Vagrant um, so that we could play with them on our local machines. Um, we decided to take Travis that step further, um, and we, we got a, an enterprise, uh, an enterprise, an evaluation um, copy running, um, and that was pretty simple to set up. Um, but most importantly, um, for developers um, it's really, and engineers, it's really quick just to add a YAML um, formatted configuration file to the root of the repository. Um, you can specify um, the language that you're testing. Um, you can see. Um, build permutations or matrix builds there. So it's testing both uh, version 1.2 or 1.3 of Go there. Um, and you can also specify, and this is really useful, um, the services that you need. So if you need a RabbitMQ server, a Redis server, um, you can specify those. Um, so compared to um, uh, Jenkins, again, that's an improvement um, in terms of configuration. You can just commit it to, to Git or to SEM. Um, mentioned matrix builds. Um, one, one downside uh, that we found with Travis Enterprise is, as I mentioned, we use GitHub Enterprise and GitHub.com, but um, Travis Enterprise will only support one GitHub instance at once. Um, possibly not a major issue for us, but um, worth bearing in mind. So, OK, Travis Enterprise uh, looks pretty good. Um, we also looked at Drone. Um, so Drone is developed, uh, it's an open source uh, piece of software developed by Drone.io. Um, the intention is that they want to re replace their current code base with it. Um, but the code is on GitHub. Anyone can use it. Um, there's a screenshot there to give you an idea. Um, it kind of looks similar to Travis in a way. Um, there's some similarity there. Um, the UI is really nice and simple. Um, you log in, you authenticate using your GitHub uh, um, OAuth, and um, immediately you can see a list of your repos, and you click Activate on the repo that you want to uh, run builds for, um, and it will pick up a config file, and you can see you can see your um, active projects there. Um, Drone's quite young at the moment, um, so it's not quite yet mature. Um, there, there's a lot of acti uh, active uh, development. Um, so there's a lot of pull requests, um, uh, a lot of issues as well, but they, they are being fixed uh, really fast. Um, so it looks, it looks generally quite promising. Um, also, it's, it has a modular architecture. So um, it's, um, if you know Go, it's quite easy to add um, Publishing plugins. Um, it also supports uh, different um, SEM, so it supports um, GitHub.com, GitHub Enterprise, Bitbucket, um, GitLab, um, quite a wide range of, of um, SEM servers. Um, it's really simple to get running. Um, it's one binary, um, and uh, yeah, you can just pass it some a couple of envir uh, environment variables, and um, yeah, you can log in with your GitHub details, and it will start running builds. Um, again, the configuration is really simple. Um, same idea as Travis. Um, you put a YAML file in your repo root, and you can see the similarities and how simple it is. Um, the, there are no um, ma matrix builds, um, but you can specify your services again just in the same way. Um, Drone comes with a number of um, Docker, Docker um, images ready built for different services. Um, but one of the really nice things is you can also specify your own, so you can specify um, any um, any image from the Docker registry, and uh, use that to run your builds, which gives a huge amount of flexibility. Um, yep, so I mentioned ready-made services. It kind of just worked. Um, Drone was um, interesting in the fact that we could get it running, uh, have an evaluation copy running on a, a real server within like less than 30 minutes, um, just for testing purposes at the moment, to allow um, developers and engineers to try it out, see what they think. Um, but yeah. Um, it was really simple. Um, some downsides. Um, I mentioned some matrix builds. Um, there's quite a, a lot of discussion around that at the moment. Um, so that is, um, I think, being planned for the future. Um, I mentioned it's uh, still maturing as well. Um, so we noticed some issues with um, sort of error handling. So you might get the old blank page. 
um, when you log in, you, you, you would get a blank page if you logged in and you didn't have, um, if you weren't if, if you weren't authenticated. Um, some features aren't yet in the UI, so um, disabling a repo or promoting a user to admin, um, but you can do those through the UI. Um, and they're working on a new, uh, a new uh, user interface as well. So uh, conclusions, um, drone looks quite promising, um, probably meets um, a lot of our, our needs. Um, matrix builds would be nice to have. Um, we're waiting for more feedback from developers. Um, they have Travis and drones try side by side. And obviously they have a lot of experience using Jenkins. Um, so we're waiting to see what, what people prefer. Um, Travis is really, really good, um, but we need to balance the cost over the benefit. As I mentioned, we do have a preference for open source. Um, so that's yet to be decided. Um, but the main takeaway that we've got from this is that there are good alternatives to Jenkins, um, especially in that space of um, containerized builds. Um, and some of them are much easier to configure. Um, so last thing, uh, potential pitfalls. Um, I mentioned that you can pull an image, um, any image from the Docker registry. Um, do check the provenance of your Docker images. Um, so. Um, there are official repos. Um, the, there are the official language stacks, like I mentioned, for um, repo uh, for Ruby and Python, for example. Um, are, and there are also trusted repos where you can have some guarantee about how the uh, images have been built using um, the Docker file. Um, so yeah, check those, and also check the underlying layers as well. Obviously, Docker uses layers, um, so make sure that the underlying layer is um, reliable as well. Um, secondly, uh, Linux containers don't provide any guarantees about security isolation. Um, so uh, make sure that you trust the users that are running, um, running builds um, on your system. Um, so yeah, finally, contribute to Drone. Um, I think it's a really good project. Um, I've, in my own time, I've been adding um, some code to it, contributed some code to it. Um, and finally, thank you very much. And we're hiring. Um, we're always hiring developers and uh, operations engineers. Thank you. Any questions? So, uh, Go is uh, so uh, drone is written in Go. So. Drone is written in Go. Yeah. So, so you're saying the primary motivation for, for uh, going down the containerization route was that you were finding builds were, were bleeding into each other in some way. Is that, have I understood that right? Um, that's part of the reason. Um, the bleeds issue was not a major one for us. Um, it was more the maintenance overhead of maintaining separate, um, separate versions of different servers um, and reconfiguring those with Puppet every time. Um, was was becoming um, more complicated than we were like. We're right, like. so because you had like a diversity of Python or Ruby versions or whatever on those, you, you ended up with a, a, a VM configured for every permutation of, of those? Exactly, so we had, uh, we have uh, five uh, build slaves, um, and yeah, so um, it, it worked okay. I mean, it worked, it worked for our needs, but it was just, like I say, the overhead, uh, overhead of when somebody needed something new, adding that on top of what we already had was, you had to kind of figure out where, where, where there was space, which server you could use to not conflict with something else. Right, right. Uh, just there. So what are you going to choose? Um, I don't know yet. Um, I mentioned, uh, like, we're quite happy with Travis, and, and we've used uh, Travis, um, the, the open source edition, if you like. Um, it really depends on... Um, like at the moment, we're quite <coughs> on my particular team. We're a little bit short on staff, um, so it might be worth paying for Travis because maybe we don't have the time to con uh, to to maintain um, drone. Uh, it is open source, so um, likely the the support overhead of that would would fall down to us. Um, so yeah, we haven't decided yet, and a lot will depend on um, what the developers come back to us with. But are you looking towards a future of container deployment? That, I think so, yeah. So, certainly, um, the people that have worked on the project, I think that's um, a conclusion that we've, we've come to. Because much of the advantages you cited for containers, which we all well know, equally well apply to VMs. So, w apart from you know, spin-up time and lighter weight and storage overhead and so on, um, are you specifically looking at containers as your future deployment? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's a really good point, um, but I think you've just um, like highlighted the main reasons. Um, 
what one of the biggest problems for us is, um, well, not one of the biggest problems, but one problem w with using VMs would be the time um, you'd have to wait to provision a new VM. And just the fact that containers are much lighter weight um, is certainly a, a huge benefit. So we're going to see Docker in G Cloud? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to ask them. Any more questions? Hi. Um, I'm just curious as to what the, um, the split of usages of the containers between yourselves and web operations side and the developers. Are you providing developers with a platform to actually use the containers, uh, use Docker? and um, change the build file and, and kind of develop with that themselves? Or are you using it as a means of deploying uh, more operational side aspects? Um, so it's mostly, um, it, it is solely at the moment for um, running, running tests. Um, so unit tests, for example. Um, in terms of um, the Docker files, for example, um, the this, the, the commands required to run the tests are obviously held within that YAML config file. Um, and then with that, you specify a particular image that you want to use. So um, Travis, for example, um, it provides a number of images that you can use. Um, one thing I don't th think it does currently is allow you to specify um, any Docker image you want. I think it has to be one of the official Travis ones, which you can modify, but you have to modify them in, in advance. I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can just select an image on the fly. Um, so as far as, um, so if, if I was a developer and I, I know um, I want a particular service, I'd look through the catalog of images, um, pick one off the shelf. If there's not something that's, that's already supported, um, if I was using Drone, for example, I could go to the Docker registry and pick, pick one that I, I could trust. Um, and yeah, the rest is, is just in the, in the YAML configuration file. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Um, and does that mean that up until now that you've been, you've always been using VMs to, to uh, base uh, your, your stack on in terms of the, the, the apps and things that sit on top? Are you looking to replace a lot of that? Um, do you see that becoming more generic in terms of the um, using Docker on top? And just add a little context. I'm, I'm personally in a situation where my company are going through something similar and what I'm finding is that as an operations guy I'm, I'm sort of being asked to reduce the amount of input on the build side in terms of uh, almost removing some of the stuff that Chef does to uh, make a more general recipe which just provides Docker and then sort of don't ask questions about kind of what happens after that in terms of what the developer side does with it? Um, so in terms of using containers in production, um, it's something that um, I know certainly amongst, amongst the ops people I work with, um, it's something that we're all interested in. Um, I've, out of the people I've talked to out, like outside of where I work and, and di different companies um, and at conferences, um, I, there, it seems there are not many people that are using, apart from some of the obviously big players, it seems there are not many companies actually using uh, containers in production. Um, it seems like that the area is still growing. Um, yeah, it's something we're, we're considering, um, but it's, it's, not, it's not something that we've, we've come up with a plan for. It's something that we, we expect to do um, in, the, in the very near future. Um, but to answer your question about sort of doing less uh, configuration management, you mentioned Chef and doing and, and using containers more. Um, I think um, there's a sort of conflation of what, what should actually be in a container. So um, a lot of tutorials they say you know run a whole Ubuntu stack in a con uh, run a whole Ubuntu image in a container. Um, whereas ideally, um, what I think is preferable, um, and again this is kind of my, my opinion, um, <coughs> is just to have a static binary. I mean, it depends what you're doing. If you're using Go, then that's really easy, or if you're using C or whatever. Um, if you're using Ruby, a little bit more complicated. Um, obviously, there's more dependencies there, Ruby gems, that kind of thing. Um, but I think minimal containers <coughs> are definitely the way to go, and if you have a really minimal container, a lot of the, um, the things you would usually require configuration management for, you kind of don't need because you're just providing a config and a binary <coughs> and, and shipping that. Service per container. 
Sorry. Service per container. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think that's Microsoft. that's a preferable pre preferable route. <coughs> so just la last last question. Um, do you see then the infrastructure changing in terms of the fact that um, I don't know whether you run your own data centers and therefore you own the bare metal, in which case you're already kind of carving it up to put VMs on, and then potentially you're carving that layer even further to put containers on. So have, have you had any discussions around the idea of how you would manage that and whether there's a, a sort of um, twice the amount of work there in, in that you're carving it twice at two different levels or whether that's uh, whether you might even look at something like uh, going further forward like a mesosphere, mesosphere uh, data center operating system or something like that? Um, so we don't, um, we don't run our own bare metal. Um, we use IaaS, so um, infrastructure as a service. It's actually... Um, uh, it's for vCloud Director, so it's a, a, an abstraction on top of um, <coughs> vSphere, if you like, um, and that's provided to us um, by, by a, a, an external vendor. Um, in terms of, again, we, we're not currently running containers in production, um, but um, yeah, I believe the, the one method to do that kind of planning is just to have a fixed size for your containers um, and try and make sure that um, all, of your, all of your images um, fit to that size and that, that allows you to do better capacity planning because, sorry, uh, you know exactly what size you expect the, com containers, the containers to be and you kinda, can kind of bin pack them um, more efficiently. Um, yeah, I, I haven't done it, so I can't say, but that's what thank, I, thank you. I thought about it. <laughs> so, um, we've got a um, really, sure. um, really quite similar uh, build pipeline, and I'm just wondering where that config management stuff kind of fits in now because obviously there's a lot of stress in using kind of config management tools to match production setups to test against as well. So those raw containers will give you some information, but obviously not in terms of what the call is going to be like as it hits production mm -hmm. as well. Um, so um, coming back to my, my point before, I think um, I think there's less less required in terms of traditional configuration management if you're just specifying like if you're just providing kind of like a binary and a and a, and a configuration file um, but also um, sorry I forgot where I was going with that um, <laughs> so yeah I think I think there's less less required in terms of configuration management um, but also um, if you're using containers you're, you're essentially shipping an artifact or ship, shipping an image um, so you have a guarantee that actually what you, that image that you pushed out to preview or staging um, is going to be the same thing that you push out to production. So it's the fact that you, you're pushing an artifact that gives you those guarantees about what's in it. If that goes all the way up to production. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Great. No, thanks very much. No worries. Thank you.